This video is brought to you by the Humble Attack on Titan Universe Bundle. Get digital copies of the Attack on Titan manga for very cheap. Choose where your money goes to Humble, the Publishers, Charity, or us at GameCross. Link in the description box below. Content has become a big sticking point when talking about video games, and there are some games that you can spend countless amount of hours on. And that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. In this video, we're taking a look at 8 PlayStation 4 games that you can spend over 150 hours on. These games are filled with content, but at the same time, they are also absolutely filled with quality. So with that being said, let's get right into this. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt The Witcher 3 is arguably the best game that has come out this generation. CD Projekt Red did an amazing job with The Witcher 3, and you can say that The Witcher 3 is the ultimate single-player experience in that it really makes nails every aspect of a single player game. You've got a fantastic story, solid gameplay, awesome visuals, and of course the game is loaded with content. Yes, you can rush through the main story and complete it rather quickly, but then you're really missing out on everything The Witcher 3 has to offer, all the various side quests, point of interest, there's so much to see and do in The Witcher 3, and now years later we also have The Witcher 3 Complete Edition which includes both expansions, and that's gonna add even more content on top of what you already have. If you've yet to play The Witcher 3, pick up the Complete Edition and you will be investing a lot of time into the game. Hacked, signed in blood, and a price to be paid. Toussaint, the land of love and wine. Your grace, vampires! Yakuza 0. Yakuza is a franchise that hasn't really hit the mainstream yet, but you're noticing it being talked about more and more, and a big reason for that is Sega doubling down on the franchise and making sure that they bring the games over here to the West. Last year, we saw the release of Yakuza Kiwami, and we also saw the release of Yakuza 0, which serves as a prequel to the Yakuza franchise and a great entry point for newcomers. Many will draw resemblances between Yakuza and say something like Grand Theft Auto, but Yakuza is different than that. It is is a little bit more of a contained experience, but you've got a lot of content to it. The gameplay is solid, and you've got a really mature story here too. Yakuza 0 is an awesome game, and you should also know that Yakuza 6 is coming out later this year in March. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen Dragon's Dogma was one of the more underrated games that released late last generation. It came out towards the end of the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360's life, so many of you guys probably missed out on it, but it was re-released on PC, and then it came over to PlayStation 4 as well, in the form of Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Now, the main issue with Dragon's Dogma on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 was on a technical side, but now on the PlayStation 4, those issues have been completely remedied. And what you have is an awesome action RPG, filled with content and this is Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen so you get the base game as well as the Dark Arisen expansion so you can expect to spend a ton of hours in this one. It also released at a budget price and you can find it very cheap now so if you've yet to play Dragon's Dogma make sure you do so. Neo. Neo was a game that was in development for a very long time. It was being developed by Team Ninja, and they have a great track record with their games. They've worked on the Dead or Alive games, the Ninja Gaiden games, on top of a couple of other games. Neo was their major release in 2017, and many will draw resemblance between it and Dark Souls, and it's definitely got that challenging style of gameplay that Dark Souls has, but it also has a great setting set in Japan during the year 1600, and you play as an Irish samurai named William. It has that Dark Souls style of gameplay design where you go through various enclosed environments, fighting enemies, and it is relatively challenging, but it's also very engaging, and it's got some great combat. This is another game that has seen some DLC release, so if you throw that on top of the base game, you are taking the content Neo has to offer to the next level, and all of that content is a lot of fun. If you're a fan of action RPGs, if you like Dark Souls, Neo is gonna be right up your alley and one of the best PlayStation 4 games you can find.
Final Fantasy 15. Speaking of games that were in development for a long time, you could throw Final Fantasy 15 on that pile too. It was announced back in 2006 as Final Fantasy Versus 13, but in 2016 we finally saw the release of the game renamed to Final Fantasy 15. Now, Final Fantasy XV is a bit different than your typical Final Fantasy game. It does have its shortcomings, namely in the storytelling department, it is just not up to par, comparatively speaking to a lot of other Square Enix JRPGs and other Final Fantasy titles. However, it more than makes up for it with its awesome open world content and gameplay. This is also a game that Square Enix has been really committed to keeping it updated with various content updates. They added a multiplayer mode, there were several story DLC with Episode Ignis, Episode Prompto, and Episode Gladius. So the the entire Final Fantasy 15 experience is very expansive. If you've yet to buy Final Fantasy 15, however, you should know that there is a Royal Edition being released. That includes the base game, all of the DLC, as well as a brand new Royal Edition update that's gonna add even more content. And it doesn't look like Square Enix is slowing down the support of Final Fantasy 15 anytime soon, so if you want a game with a lot of longevity to it, FF15 is definitely that. Might not be safe for us there. Might not be safe for us here. Although he's the weakest and youngest member of the team, his masterful gunplay makes Prompto a valuable ally during skirmishes. Prompto's favorite hobby is photography, and the photos he takes on your journey can be shared on social networks. This one's pretty good. I dig it too. Gladio is Noctis's eldest companion, and his family has long served as the shield protecting the kings of Lucis. Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age From one Final Fantasy game to another, we also have Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, a remaster of Final Fantasy XII which many would consider to be the black sheep of the franchise. At the time of Final Fantasy XII's release, it received immense critical acclaim from journalists, however from the gaming audience, there were many that were a bit disappointed by Final Fantasy XII and now in 2018 I really can't understand why. Sure, it did have some shortcomings and the main character in Vaughn wasn't all too engaging, however if you step back for a second and judge the game as a whole. There's a lot to do in Final Fantasy XII. It's got a great cast of characters outside of the main character, and this Zodiac Age version is by far the best way to play the game. You've got a new job system, a better soundtrack, much better visuals, and so on. Maybe a lot of gamers didn't enjoy the different gameplay style that Final Fantasy XII implemented and played more like an MMO, but now in 2018, that's something a lot more gamers can appreciate, and you saw that with the release of Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. It was received very well from critics and fans alike. If you've yet to check out Final Fantasy XII or it disappointed you the first time around, give it another shot with Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. You must run as far as you can. That's what a sky pirate does. You fly. Don't you? I'm ready to find my purpose. To find some real answers. I wish I knew. I'll find them. Persona 5. You can make a legitimate argument that Persona 5 is the best Japanese RPG of all time, and that's for a variety of reasons. Right when you boot up the game, you can tell that it has some incredibly stylish visuals. The game looks great, and even with this being a title that released on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, so just from your traditional technical standpoint, it might not be the best looking game ever. However, it makes up for that with its use of a fantastic art style, and it extends far beyond that. You've got great characters, great turn-based gameplay, showing that that style can still work. And of course, as with any Persona game, Persona 5 is absolutely loaded with content. Content that is split up in two ways. You've got your dungeon crawling JRPG, but as is the case with the Persona titles, you've also got a pseudo high school simulator, which to the naked eye could seem a little weird. However, Persona 5 does such a great job of blending these two gameplay styles, and it always makes the game engaging. And considering this is a game you can spend well over 150 hours on, you need to keep the game engaging. And even if you're not a fan of Japanese RPG, Persona 5 is one that definitely has that Japanese style of presentation, but give it a chance. It's gonna win you over because it is that good. Execute them and continue to give birth to even stronger personas. The world is not as it should be. It faces an inevitable utter ruin. However, mankind is said to hold the power to overturn even the most dire of predicaments. And finally, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. 
At this point, if you haven't played The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, I don't know what to say. It seems like this game has been re-released so many times. However, it is still a fantastic open-world RPG, and with The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition, you've got your typical remastering improvements, better visuals, better technical performance, and you've also got all of the downloadable content, and if you know how lengthy of an experience the base Skyrim game is, well, all of that downloadable content is gonna add even more hours. And with The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, you can spend well over 150 hours, you can spend well over 200 or 300 hours because it's got that much replayability to it. Replaying the game and taking a different character path gives the game nearly endless replayability, and that's great if you're looking for sheer number of hours to spend on a game. Nonetheless, if you've never played The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, you must do so. Pick up the Special Edition, and if you want to revisit the game, the Special Edition is a great way to do that as well. By the way, on PlayStation 4, the game is available on VR too. You really have a wide array of ways to play the game, so definitely do so because it is a great game. So that wraps up eight huge PlayStation 4 titles that you can spend over 150 hours on. What do you think? Have you checked out any of these games? Have you spent a lot of hours on them? Let us know in the comment section down below. And if you want us to mention any other games in future entries of this series, let us know in the comments as well. Thank you for watching and goodbye.